Video 1. What is an invasive or non-native species? How do they get introduced to an ecosystem? By Trinity Costa, Selena Tapia, and Madeline Monquero. Brought to you by your very own trainee group of wildlife biologists. The definition of invasive species is a species that is non-native to the ecosystem and can cause environmental harm. So now, what are some examples of an invasive species you may be wondering? Example 1. Invasion Planet of the Apes. It's like, more like invasion of the large Burmese pythons, because that is so much better. How Slytherin? No? No? Okay. Well, these pythons are, were, sharing similar resources with the native alligators. Now this creates a battle, as I'll call it, within the ecosystem resulting in death for both species. See you later, alligator. Example 2. The rabbit. The fluffy creatures native to southern Europe slash North Africa. Although rabbits usually tend to overproduce and expand all over the world. Now it doesn't really harm the ecosystem, but could potentially cause more hunting to be done. Though, in Australia's history, it shows by the 1900s the overgrowth of the rabbit's population caused more erosion in soils and burrows throughout the land. Accordingly, the most known cause of species loss in Australia. Example 3. Listed in the world's top 100 worst invasive species is, drumroll please, the carp. The carp is native to its waters in Europe and Asia, but has been known to invade other ecosystems worldwide. Now what can a poor little fishy do? Well, apparently a lot, because these carps are known to worsen their ecosystems with their feeding habits, reproductive rates, altering slash ruining the natural vegetation, which according to my citation, hurts the native ducks. Review. Our first example shows that when two species seek similar resources, competition occurs due to the limited amount of food, space, and shelter in the ecosystem. All organisms rely on natural resources such as food and water to survive. That was the end of video one. Video two, how do invasive species impact the ecosystem's biotic and abiotic components? As we all may know, invasive species are not native to a specific location and have a tendency to spread that may cause damage to an environment. In an ecosystem, there are abiotic and biotic factors. A biotic factor is a non-living thing. Some examples are air, water, soil, sunlight, temperature, and climate. Biotic factors are living things, which can include a snake, a tree, dead or alive, a piece of wood, and many more. Here are some more examples of abiotic and biotic factors. The abiotic factors determine where a specific type of species is able to live. It can also influence a species' ability to survive since every species is able to survive within a range of the abiotic factors. Some species have a wide tolerance range, which makes it easier to invade other ecosystems, just like the Burmese pythons that have been invading the Florida Everglades. The Burmese pythons originally came from Southeast Asia. The pythons came here from pet trades intentionally or unintentionally releases. There are also some species that may have a more narrow range, which makes it harder for them to move to a different ecosystem. As we know, abiotic factors are living things in the environment. They also determine how successful the particular type of species will be. As for competition, there are many other species that may be competing for limited resources, such as light, food, shelter, and mates. For example, when the Burmese pythons invades the Florida Everglades, it was already the home of many alligators that were native to the environment. With the snakes and alligators in the same area, they are now having to compete for similar resources to survive, which resulted in deaths. As the population increases in an ecosystem, the demand for resources such as food, water, and shelter that are very important to all species, there will come a time that there would not be enough resources for each individual. Fun facts, did you know invasive species like the Burmese python cost a hundred billion in damages in the USA alone? The second fun fact is that the Burmese python is one of the five largest species of snakes in the world. And the last fun fact is that the Burmese python 
eats a wide range of wildlife, which includes songbirds, deers, and alligators up to six feet long. And this is now the end of video two. Video three, how do they affect competition in the ecosystem? Invasive species can affect an ecosystem greatly. They may cause many issues regarding the other native species. An example of such may be seen with the relationship in Florida between the Burmese pythons, native to Southeast Asia, and the alligators, native to the Everglades there. The pythons and alligators are very similar predators and prey on similar organisms. The competition between them is fierce. They are constantly competing for things such as prey and shelter. This has caused many casualties in both species. Another example of invasive species impacting competition in ecosystems may be seen in Africanized bees. These organisms are very dangerous hybrids between African and European honeybees that were created in Brazil in the 1950s but have been traveling northern over time. These aren't like most hybrids though, relating more to Klaus Michelson, original vampire werewolf hybrid. These bees, who travel in large numbers, have been involved in particularly violent attacks with stings and bites that are fatal to animals and people. But what do these pythons and other invasive species have in common? They both take other organisms' space, food, shelter, and water. Species not natively involved with these pythons and bees cannot operate peacefully when they seek the same resources and population density is high. Organisms rely on natural resources in their environments, such as quantity of water and light, and suitable temperatures, and so when those things are taken away, competition is created, which is bad for both creatures. And that was the end of video 3. Video 4. What is the answer to getting rid of an invasive species? What has been tried and is it cost effective? While searching for the answer, I came upon the National Wildlife Federation, which has attempted to stop invasions by 1. Trying to stop the introduction of the new species into an ecosystem. 2. Have monitoring systems to watch out for new invasions. And 3. When an invasion is detected, to immediately work on stopping it. Well, the Federation would need to monitor to keep an eye out for invaders. The Federation also said that they would create mechanisms to reduce the introduction of invasive species. And the last bullet on their list was to move rapidly to prevent it from going further, meaning they need plenty of equipment suited for the particular environment. So, would it be cost effective? Sure, it would most likely work effectively if they are professionals in the field aiming to put a stop to the invasions, but the cost would be pricey due to all the equipment they'd need. Furthermore, would it be cost effective? The definition of cost effective is effective or productive in relation to its cost. So, going back to the National Wildlife Federation, would their tactics to remove invasive species be cost effective? For example, by using these tactics, the Federation most likely could have put a stop to the Burmese pythons by either catching them early or setting up some mechanism to prevent them from going there in the first place. And this is now the end of video 4.